Hey, what's going on everyone? Nick here. And today I'm going to make a video just talking about some of the things that I think people really are missing when it comes to e-commerce and Shopify. You know, I get up messages all the time, people asking me to look at their store, asking me why something's not selling, asking me why something's not doing well. And I see these posts in the group all the time, people posting their store link, people posting, you know, and they're just acting confused, acting like, why haven't I found a winner yet? Why am I not making money? And, you know, the reality is that even though I've made these videos, even though I made the entire drop shipping course, which goes over a lot more than just finding products on AliExpress. I mean, there's a whole video on branding just by itself. There's a whole video on setting up your store and there's an entire process there that if you follow works like that's just the bottom line. There's there's no equivocations about it. The process works. It's proven in the videos. We have people in the group that are already making thousands of dollars a day from watching that video or those videos. So what I want to do for everybody, because I can't manage all the questions. I can't even manage to get to all the questions in the group. And it has nothing to do with needing an admin for the group because other people are out there helping. It's more to the fact that if I can make a video that really helps explain and put some clarity on the areas I think people are messing up, then this is something that I think will be good for everybody. So you see I have some notes here I made in the background. We're going to go through it all so you don't have to be trying to scribble them down right now. And I'm actually going to put this in the text files as well in the group. And, uh, you know, the point is here with what we're doing are I'm going to look at it from a different perspective. All right. When we're going through the videos I originally did in the group, uh, basically, I show you how to do it. And in all fairness, I know that a lot of this is subconscious for me on a level where, you know, they talk about the, the levels of learning where you start out uh, at. Um, you start out at an unconscious, what, what am I trying to say here? Here we go. This is what I was trying to say. I looked it up because I didn't want to mess it up. You know, so everybody starts out at an unconscious incompetence where you don't even know what you don't know, right? And then maybe you get into a group like this or you see somebody post a, uh, a screenshot of Shopify and then you have conscious incompetence where you realize that there's something that you don't know. People are making thousands of dollars a day out there drop shipping e-commerce products. All right. You start to practice some things and you get the conscious competence, which may be where a lot of you are at right now in between these two levels or getting to here where you're watching the videos and you're starting to realize how you do this. All right. It's taking a lot of effort on your part. You're really still thinking it. Some of you are overthinking it to a spectacular degree, but you know, you're, you're getting competent, even though it's taking a lot of effort, you're starting to learn the steps and go through them and practice them. And then eventually you get the unconscious competence, which is like where I'm at, where I can sit down and decide to set up a store. Once I have the idea for the brand and, and what I want it to be, I can sit down and set up a store in a matter of a couple hours and just go through the same exact process every single time as I do in the videos because I've done it so many times and I understand and I've studied this so many times that it's, it's unconscious for me in a lot of ways. Now, of course, there are still things that I'm learning like everybody else. Uh, you know, mastery is never complete. You always have more and more and more to do. But when it comes to some of these basic things that I go through in the videos, I think that, you know, maybe I, I try to do a really good job explaining them, but maybe it's time to look at it from the opposite side of it is going back now and saying, these are the areas that you need to check that maybe you're messing up on. And this is why you're not having any success. Because the reality is, if you've gone through the videos and you've watched them, I had a conversation with one of my friends the other day about this. If you've watched the videos and you've gone through them all, and you're not having success, then you're not following the same process. All right. It's just that simple. If you were following the same process, you'd be having success, just like many people are in the group right now. Now, I understand that sometimes, you know, you watch the videos and then you have all these other people doing all these other things. You're in like 30 different Shopify groups. You're reading blogs and you're you're following these uh, gurus that are out there that are telling you this and that. And it gets to be a little bit confusing, muddled. Maybe you get off the beaten path that you started on. But we're going to go back and we're going to circle back because, again, the reality is I have to be completely honest with you right now for you to be able to get good at this if you're not good at it already. And the reality is if you're not having success, then you are doing something wrong and your process is incorrect. 
all right because if you're following the same exact process that i showed in the videos to the letter the same way that i did it then there's no way you wouldn't be having success just like all the success stories that we have in this group already just like i was able to take that exact store and build it live from zero to five figures through those videos in front of the entire group without any practice without any chance in of messing up and going back and getting a redo or a mulligan or whatever you know so that's what you need to understand and what you need to realize that somewhere along the way your process is broken if you are not getting the results that you want to get and to get those results you need to start taking a step back and kind of separating yourself from what you're doing a little bit and looking at it like a coach might look at it and try to understand where is the process broken here where is it messing up what part of the system am I, am I not following like Nick talked about? You know, did I start to veer off over here and do my own product research a different way? Did I start to veer off over here and I bought some shiny object that told me it was going to do it for me? Am I not researching my audiences enough? Did I not watch Nick's stealth Facebook video research? Uh, you know, did I not watch Nick's Facebook ad videos? And again, I'm not the only person that can tell you how to do this, but anybody that shows you how to do it, if you want to get the results like they are getting, you need to follow it to the exact letter that they're showing you. Not take half of it and then introduce your own half and think you're going to do it better, right? You want to do exactly what their system is until you start getting those results. Then you can go back and tweak it a little bit. That's what I did. I had my own system and then I, I started to get some e-commerce advice uh, from from courses and groups that were out there. I took it. I saw what was working. And I blended it with what I knew was already working and I put it all together into a system. Now that that's something that I did. Uh, but, you know, I'm giving you that system now. So all you really need to do is follow it. And then once you get good at it, start, you know, expanding and doing your own thing from there. But until you're getting results, you shouldn't be trying to reinvent the wheel. OK, so let's get into this. All right. I have three examples here of some stores that I want to show you. And I want to show you these stories because I think they're all good examples of some stuff that we're going to go through. All right. So when we come in here, all right, ma mainly what we're going to talk about is your, your product page because your product page is, is the most important thing. Um, your product page is really, your product page is all about this. Not I needs. Your product page needs to answer the questions your visitor has subconsciously every time they visit your page. All right. And we're talking about the product page because we're directing our traffic right to the product page. All right. So when you see like this store here, you know, we're on the home page, they have a good home page design. You can look at these and see kind of what they're doing. Um, they're setting their home page up as like a sales page kind of thing. But really what your home page should just be doing is directing people to your products right so that's why for me a home page isn't necessarily as important like they got some cool stuff on theirs but you can see their home page is all about directing to their products whether it's the earphone uh, whether it's this video here you know this is going to take you to a product okay and then we're going to look at the product page now every single product page needs to answer uh, you know, subconsciously, there are things going on in somebody's mind as soon as they come to your product page, whether you realize it or not. And I think the problem a lot of people are having is you're trying to rush this process. You're trying to create an e-commerce store. Like you get this idea where you see people doing well and making a lot of money and making it seem easy. And so you get the idea in your head that it really doesn't matter what your product page looks like. All you have to do is throw a product up on the Internet and start running Facebook ads to it and you're going to make money. Like it's this backwards kind of idea that I don't know where people are. Yes, making money online is easier than it has ever been, in my opinion. But at the same time, you know, you, you can't just make that automatically translate in your head to the fact that, OK, if my store, you know, is just super, super plain and it's real easy. I'm still going to make money like you still need to construct something that is going to make sense. All right. And it needs to make sense in the these subconscious things here all right now a couple things i want to point out just before we even get into some of this stuff is expected layout template and having your price image and call to action description above the fold all right 
these are things that you should take as like a, a sense of, of what will work for you. All right, an expected layout. Okay, by this I mean don't try to reinvent the wheel. You can see they didn't try to, this is a basic Shopify theme here. These are all Shopify stores that I'm using, themes that you can buy. All right, so I personally don't really like their homepage here um, because it's kind of funky. I mean, you know, it's just like it's off balance. I don't, I don't really like the way that that's off balance. This gets a lot better down here um, because they're showing, you know, they are showcasing their products and you can click them right here. And they are doing something that's a little bit more like you know it gets you and i know that this might be a weird example but i literally just went and i picked three stores that i knew are doing very well and they're all very different all right so notice they all have these email subscribe things that pop up too something to consider i don't i'm going to be doing that as well with my newest store and the difference here is uh, you know, um, some of these things that I'm going to talk about really are more necessary when you're building a brand that you want to build long term and you really want to build a following around. Some of them aren't as necessary if you're just drop shipping and making money. And I'm going to point out the difference. All right. But no matter what, when you come to somebody's product page. All right. So your homepage should definitely like, you know, point you somewhere to a product. Okay. And then on theirs as well, these guys are just selling these fake tattoos, probably drop shipping them. It's actually impressive that they're doing very well. I don't know if they're just drop shipping these or what. Well, anyway, that's not the point of this conversation. Oh, no, they're designed by people. Okay, so, so here we go. Every single one of these you can see has an expected type of layout. This is the most, uh, this is the most random type of layout but still expected in the sense of description price and options all right with an image now this is a really cool image um that it can spin around like that i think that's cool they have a video we're going to talk about some of this kind of stuff but basically you know the everything is above the fold where you can add it to cart add to bag uh, add to cart. Notice how they all say add to cart. They don't say buy now or you know something corny. They say add to cart because that's what you're actually doing. All right. If you click on this button, you're not going right to a buy now page. It's taking. It's going to add it to the cart. All right. We're going to talk about more of that in a second. So they are all following a template. They're all an expected type of layout, and they all have the important factors that you need above the fold. Which, if you're unfamiliar with that term above the fold, it just means that whatever you land on before scrolling down is what you see. All right. So on every single page, you want to see the important stuff without having to scroll. OK. Uh, and the reason for that is simply that people are lazy and the average person, if they don't see what they want when they first look at it, they, they're not going to scroll down to look more. They're just going to bounce off the page. So you see price, you see description, you see options and the ad you know, the call to action button on every single one of these. Okay. Now questions. Um, oh, and a note here, longer product, longer sales page guys. This is, this is directed towards e-commerce specifically. Uh, I mean, well, physical product e-commerce, but if you're selling something with your e-commerce, like a, a digital service or a really high end product, um, you know, something that's a big purchase explanation, then, you know, you're going to have a longer sales page is basically what that note is about. All right. So, and the reason is because the longer, the bigger the price, generally, the more explanation you need to um, explain to people why they're, they're paying that much. Okay. So let's get into some branding questions, not really questions because I phrase them in the sense of what the customer's perspective is going to be. First one is I know exactly what this product is and what it looks like. All right. On every single one of these, you can see this. Now, if you've been following my videos, this should not really be a problem for you because I go through how to do the images and make sure that that's very clear what type of images you need and how they need to be set up. And just in general, the templates with Shopify make this pretty simple. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but it is important because when they come to your product page, they need to be able to look at the image and they need to be able to know exactly what this product is that you're selling on this page. Otherwise, they're going to move off the page. All right. So, you know, on this one, uh, I'm not going to lie. 
with their with their page, if I didn't know this and I don't know this brand, I think that they are selling like this outfit here together, honestly. So I do think this is a little confusing the way that they do this. Now, this is a, a brand that does well um, and they're creative. So maybe the you know people, women might already know what they're about when they come to this brand because, you know, they have a lot of different stuff. Maybe they are selling both things here. I don't know. But that's a little confusing to me. OK. Uh, and I'm not the target market, so it needs to make sense to the target market, basically. Uh, this very obvious what you're getting. All right. But like if you're getting the the headphones and say it came with some type of wire, you know, you want to know people need to know exactly what they're getting. OK. So like this. This image is confusing because it has a stand. So if you don't actually get a stand with your headphones, then I wouldn't include that image. All right. I know exactly how this product works. That's going to be easy for things like t-shirts and your average novelty item that you're selling. But something like this, you can see you need some explanation here. They want to know exactly how the product works. You know, what, what does it do? What, what can I do with it? So you can see there's more descriptions here on the product page that people can go down and get an exact breakdown of how this thing works and what it's all about. I mean, it shows you everything. This is a really good product page, okay? Again, they use this image here with the stand. I'm gonna guess the stand is an upsell, um, but you know, they, they keep breaking it down, breaking it down exactly what you get. Technical specifications here at the bottom. Oh, and it does tell you what's in the box, okay? So you do get all this in the box and you don't get one of the stands like it was shown. All right, this is an expensive product, $549. So the sales page is a lot longer. They need to really justify the price of why somebody's going to spend $550 on a set of headphones with them. So you can tell they do a really good job going through here and breaking it all down and using good branding, the most modern, most advanced modern thinking cap. All right, this one. So here they, they break it down a little bit more. They show you some, well, these are other products. This page is kind of confusing, honestly, but I'm showing you the examples of everything and, and just kind of what I think. Uh, and then with these guys, look, this is a very small priced product. So uh, they just give you a basic description. Okay, you get what it is by looking at it. It's just the stick on tattoo and they're showing you exactly what it is. Safe and non-toxic, printed on vegetable-based ink, made in USA, compliant and fun for all ages. Uh, and a little description down here. And again, more lasting average two to four days, oil free. So they tell you what it is and you get your basic description. You know exactly what this product is and how it works. Now, the only thing they don't, they do show you a picture of how it comes. Uh, and I think with what they assume here is how it works. All right, or maybe you get instructions with it. Oh, watch our application video to become a pro. Okay, so they do have somewhere on here where you can click for how to apply your Tatly, which is cool because this is um, this is something that I think is needed because it makes it again exactly how does this product work. All right, so they have an image or a video. Now I would make that a little bit bigger here if it were me, honestly. Um, you know, or make it somewhere where everybody can see it on any page they go to as like a, a footer thing or a header thing, but, uh, or something in the menu, but it's still cool that they have it. Watch the application video and become a pro. Okay. I know how large or small this product is and where I'm going to put it. All right. Again, these are, these are things that people need to know. All right. Remember, as I'm going through these, these are things your customers are saying in their head without even realizing it. All right. I know how large or small this product is and where I'm going to put it. So great example with these right here. They're showing you real live images. So you understand and they're showing you some different application points. So you understand exactly how large or small this is and start to get an idea of where you would want to wear it. Right. Same thing with here. 
they're giving you uh, a lot of information on these and of course you know where you're going to wear headphones and you know how large or small they are but this is um this is a really good example and it's nice to know that they come with a case and that you can get a stand for them so that you understand where you can keep them how you can store your headphones kind of thing uh this this doesn't really apply clothing i mean of course you put clothing where clothing goes so but this applies here in the sense of you want to know how it fits so you can see this woman and her body type on here and you can compare that to yourself and, and kind of get an idea of how this is going to fit you so this is a really great example now i'm not sure what type of customization they're using to have this in their store but it is a good example of uh of thinking about this question in a different way. I know how large or small this product is and where I'm going to put it, right? You can also think how it's going to fit, right? And, and that's what mock-ups can do really well. And something that, you know, for t-shirts. Now, I'm not going to say that I follow every single thing that's on here down to the letter um, because, you know, when I sell t-shirts, I generally don't use a mock-up with a person on it. And a mock-up with a person can help in the sense of, this question how large or small this product is and where I'm going to put it because another way this is how it's going to fit me right so that's what people want to know when they're looking okay fourth thing I know this product can be shipped to me and I'm willing to pay the cost all right now I have a note in here that says free shipping higher conversion rates all right I want to put that in there because I charge shipping because I don't have a problem with my conversion rates however uh, free shipping is something that you're going to see said by almost every, by a lot, let's just, let's not say it like that. Let's just say a lot of expert Shopify advisors out there are going to tell you that free shipping gives you higher conversion rates. And that's true. So you should know that. If you're having trouble with your conversion rates, maybe you should try free shipping. All right. You've seen the way I set my shipping up and I give a very specific reason and purpose for doing it that way and it works, okay? But if you're having trouble with conversions, maybe you should try free shipping, all right? Because this is something important. I know this product can be shipped to me and I'm willing to pay the cost. All right, now you don't see that generally on a lot of product pages, but you know, if you have free shipping, you can put a free shipping bar up top and that could let people know automatically that they get free shipping. All right, a lot of times with e-commerce, see, they have it here, free shipping and returns. All right, this is this is a great, this probably helps. Now, with an expensive product, you absolutely should have free shipping because people are spending a lot of money with you. But that's not always going to be the case. I mean, if you look at furniture, people order furniture and you're still paying shipping most of the time because it's expensive to ship it. All right, so free shipping can definitely increase conversions. But you want to know, generally, this is where you see in all of my products that uh, I let people know the shipping time about, you know, I say due to high demand or whatever I say, um, free or shipping, you know, please allow two to four weeks or 10 to 15 days for delivery, right? That lets people know, number one, that it can be delivered to me anywhere in the U.S. And number two, it lets them know an expected time. All right. It doesn't tell them how much the shipping costs which maybe that could increase the conversions on my page because people will know right away. So it would lessen my uh, abandoned carts. But basically, you want to let people know something about the shipping on the product page. All right. Um, because that gives them a sense of awareness and it answers this question for them. Mentioning the shipping just at least lets them know that you're on top of it. All right. And free shipping, you know, people may not be willing to pay the cost. And that's why we see abandoned cart ratios. So if you put the cost on and you explain the shipping, like, uh, you know, if you have domestic shipping starts at $4.95, international shipping starts at $10.95, please allow 10 to 15 days. Like I may actually add something a little bit more about the shipping on my new store, the Daily Dose of Hustle, because I, I do like this point a lot. All right, this is where I think a lot of people uh, get abandoned carts because they set up, you know, a shipping system and they don't really explain it ahead of time. So you're getting people that go to buy the product and don't understand what the shipping is going to be like. 
So this is just something you want to think about. I think I explained this well and talked about it in the videos, and I've proven that both can work. Obviously, let me know free shipping works. And if you have free shipping, you should shout it out from the mountaintops everywhere on your site, or at least have something like this here where they do. Um, but if, I mean, that should really be above the fold, honestly. Free shipping and returns should be above the fold, because like this, you can't see it. So they should include that up here or next to the add to cart button, which may not be possible, or have like some type of bar up here that lets them know. Um, you know, it's that way people know the shipping. Okay. Moving on to the next one. I know I can return it. This is huge, guys. This is absolutely huge, uh, which is why. Now, see, there's again, they have it. It's not above the fold, but free shipping and returns. But it's something that you can include the returns in your checkout stamps. You can, uh, you know, you can include a return policy in your menu bar. Um, you can re include the return policy in the footer. Basically, the more the more bold you are about letting people know you have a return policy, the better. Uh, including it somewhere on the product page that they can see is, is a good idea. But you want to let people know somewhere that you have a return policy. People need to know in this day and age that they can return a product. All right. So if they don't find anywhere on your website that there's something you have for returns and it doesn't seem legit, then you're not going to, you know, it's going to hurt your conversion rates. All right. So enough said about that. Let people know that they can return your items somewhere, whether it's through a checkout stamp, whether it's through something in your menu, in your footer, something you include right in the description. Let people know. All right. Let's see how they do here. returns so they have something in their footer so that people know that it can be returned all right and with tatley what do they do so it doesn't look like they have something about returns which is interesting it's probably in their faq page you know maybe these guys think at this point because they have been featured so many places and they they might have a lot of popularity behind them already that they don't need to include something like that but like i don't see anywhere here where it says that you can return this and personally i don't think that's a good thing so i would take that as an example of what not to do because you know Again, they may be famous now. I don't know anything about Tatley. I just went to a site and I started researching some well-done Shopify store examples. Uh, and, you know, I'm sure it's on their FAQs page. How much is shipping? When will I get my order? Huh, they don't have a return policy at all. That's really weird. That's horrible in my opinion now again they're they're making money so that's that i guess is an example of how it can still work without every single without every single piece of information in there but uh i would definitely go by these two uh this is the best i think knowing that there's a return policy maybe they just think with their branding and their popularity and how easy their items are that it's not necessary um, it looks like they get a lot of publicity. So, you know, I, I guess maybe they feel like they don't need it, which could be true at this point for them. Um, you know, I don't know what their first original site looked like, but I would definitely include one. Okay, moving on. This is just meant to be an example and look at the different way stores do things. So, uh, I trust this brand. Support, quality guarantee, safe checkout. These are all things that I talk about in the videos, checkout stamps and uh, having a support email address, a phone number and address, quality guarantee, all those types of things are subconscious things that let people know. All right. So see, they do have something, by the way, about their shipping um, right here up top everywhere, shipped around the world from Brooklyn, New York. So people know that they can get this worldwide. They know where it's designed. Uh, you know, so that's and that's already like that's a good point there on their shipping. Um, 
I trust this brand. So these guys, I, like right here, this is a big trust feature for them, obviously. I mean, they're popular, so they're they're kind of at a different point where they're already a known brand. Uh, they have reviews here, so that's something that I talk about later on as a good way, an element of a product page. But you want to go to a page, basically, and feel like you can get the support that you need on the page, all right? So, they have a video, if you come down, try risk free for 60 days, oh, and here's their refund policy as well, I'm sorry, I missed this stuff, if it doesn't help you, <laughs> if it doesn't help you period, better, we'll give you a refund, no questions asked, so they do have some risk aversion there, um, risk free and you know the stuff that you would think how I can return it that's also a good point for the for the uh, knowing that you can that you can trust this brand okay they just go right into reviews and Facebook reviews and, and all that kind of stuff uh, they don't really have a support email anywhere that you can see but they do have a lot of stuff here um, that you can look at for these guys over here they have some call outs right here as well down at the bottom they have support FAQ they have a phone number designed and developed in New York City they have office hours so they definitely hit all the points they just don't hit them in a place that you can see them unless you scroll all the way to the bottom but they have contact us page support FAQ so they have everything that you would need um, to let you know that you can get support if you want to and that's that's basically what you want is you want an area where people know that they can get support all right so let me pull up a different example really quickly here Now we just went through these through and some of them were kind of random. Let's go through uh, just another store as well and let's let's take a look at how they do things, all right? So right away, now this is this is pure Shopify and AliExpress here from what I can tell, which is why I wanted to look at this example to give you guys an idea. You know, I know a lot of you in this group have probably looked at these types of items and thought that they couldn't be sold. Like how do you sell jewelry type items, you know? Look at the branding that they're doing here. All right, they went way above and beyond just creating a, a bland, boring, uh, you know, shop shop here, niche store deals .com kind of thing to, you know, they actually branded their site and knew what kind of things they wanted to sell. Um, and this is a general niche store, right? They're only really selling jewelry and accessories, but they're selling it to both men and women. And there's a huge amount of categories between bracelets, necklaces, earrings, rings, and then other types of accessories that they can sell. And you can see their notify app is showing they're making sales right now. All right. So let's take a look at one of these items and they're selling worldwide too. All right. So very, very much, um, hitting all the points honestly now this theme i don't know what this theme is because whenever you have a double menu up top like this that's probably a paid theme uh because that's that's like this you know i mean they're they definitely put a lot of time and thought into this all right you can see um they you can even switch between countries in here which is an app so this is a really good store as an example to look at all right, let's go back and check all of our subconscious questions here. Number one, it's following an expected layout and a template that we would normally see. I know exactly what this product looks like. Yep, absolutely. Right here in the picture. Great picture, something you can zoom in on. You know what this product looks like, okay? I know exactly how this product works. Uh, there's no description here. You know, I would I would think that they would want a, a description, but they do have three variants in here. 
they let you know it's an open cup bangle. So this is something that's pretty obvious, right? You know how this works by looking at it. It's just something that goes on your wrist, all right? And we're just looking at above the fold for right now. I know how large or small this product is and where I'm going to put it. Again, something that you can see right here very easily. It fits on somebody's wrist, and that looks like an average size wrist. I know this product can be shipped to me, and I'm willing to pay the cost. Free worldwide shipping on orders over $25. All right, so you know, first of all, that they ship worldwide. Second of all, you know it's free over orders of $25. So third of all, you also know that if your order is under $25, that you're probably going to have to pay for shipping. All right, so they cover all that right here in the header. If you have any questions, they have something right here about shipping, okay? I know I can return it. Now, let's see if they have some type of return policy, all right? It's not above the fold. They do have their, their safe and secure checkout thing right here. And then you can see they have their description underneath a little bit with more pictures. Three variants to choose from. They do give you the link. They give you a great shipping breakdown here. Let's see what happens when we go to the bottom. How to wear, how to take care of. Reviews, FAQs, shipping. All right. so. The only thing I don't really see so far, I might be missing it. Oh, well, that's interesting. All sale, oh, it's all sale items. Okay, so they do have, uh, you know, they do have a return and exchange section. They kind of bury it a little bit. Uh, I would, that's the only thing I've seen so far on their store that I would do differently. Now, it seems like they're, you know, they're selling, I don't know what their conversion rate is. But I would absolutely include a more clear call to action, or not call to action, but a more very clear cut uh, return policy. I mean, where I, when I am in my store, Daily Dose of Hustle, you know, my layout is very simple. Um, and because of the, the customization, the some of my stuff is under the fold, but basically I wanted to show you here that I have a refund policy. It's very easy to find. You know, most of my stuff, I hit all the, the main things that you need to see. Um, now the way that, the way that, uh, this page is for custom plex is a little bit differently because of the type of image it creates, but, um, for general products like with T launch. So because my, I, this is, if I want to change this, this is because my logo is big. So that's something. I need to consider making my logo a lot smaller and getting rid of some of this padding in the header here to get my uh, button above the fold. But you can see the refund policy. All right. So that's something that I need to look at in my store. Okay. Um, I trust this brand. All right, support, quality, guarantee, safe checkout. So they have this stuff that's, you know, really easy way of just telling people, listen, you're guaranteed a safe checkout. Uh, they have, they have a contact page right here for people to be able to get a hold of them. They have social icons here, so you know they're on social media. They're available to re be reached. They're not hiding. Uh, down here, same thing. They have their FAQs page. They have a reviews page. They have a contact page. All right. So they don't include like a support email address anywhere. Um, but again, they do have spots where you know you can contact them and get the information that you need, check your order status, shipping, that kind of thing. So as you've seen here, um, not any one of these hit like every single thing exactly. Um, but they're all doing most of it. They're doing it a little bit creatively and in their own way. But, you know, there's things there that can be done better on almost all the stores. Just like on my store, 
you know, if I put a, a smaller header and a smaller logo at the top, then I can fit more things above the fold, um, which is, is what I should do, right? And so something I'm going to do. So even, you know, you want to constantly be evaluating your store with these types of questions. Or, I mean, they're questions because you could, you could frame this and say, do I know exactly what this product looks like? All right. And this is the affirmative of how your customers should feel when they visit your page. All right. Elements of your product page. Copy. Good copy. All right. Uh, number one thing is not trying to get too cute with it. I just had an example. This goes for your ads as well. I just was talking again with my friend the other day and they were trying to go way over the top with their copy. And, you know, it's not that I don't like creativity. It's not that I don't like writing because I do. It's just that when it comes to selling, you want to keep it basic. You want to stick with what works for your brand. Look how basic their stuff is. You know, they're selling water stick on or water, you know, tattoos that you stick on with water or however they work. And so you don't need a lot. This is very what you see, what you get. The pictures are what really sell this because you see how they look in the pictures. You give them enough of a description to understand. Another call to action tap by this artist. Get ready to tackle the day. You know, very simple description. They tell you what it is. They tell you the size. This is all copy here. You know, the name of it. Like, this is all their copy. So, oh, and it's sold out. If you do have stuff like that that's a quantity, that is something you should include or not include. You need to let people know if it's sold out, which should seem obvious and something why I didn't include it in here. But that would be like a number seven. Is this product available to order? Right. But that's so obvious that if you're doing that wrong, you shouldn't even be in e-commerce. Um, so let's get back into this. All right. So the copy is is very simple. All right. Because it's a very simple product. This requires a little bit more explanation. So uh, they have a video included in their copy, which they don't just make you watch. They, you know, click for video to understand it. Uh, this is part of their copy here, and then they really just kind of, they break it down a little bit more with a picture. This is all copy, okay? So when you think of copy, you want to think of your, when you think of copy, you're thinking of name, description, guarantee. Basically, what is convincing them to buy this product? All right, when we come over here, these guys went above and beyond with their copy because they're selling an expensive product, all right? So they really do a good job here of writing a very good description that gives you not only a look at the features and the benefits, but also uh, gives you a, the a sense of wearing it. Wireless tools to help focus, inspire, and transport your mind. Like they're trying to write something that gives you this sense of owning that product already. And that's something that you do want to do with your copy. All right, is have the sense of, of owning it and feeling what it's like to already have it. Okay. And then they come down. This is all sales copy. They break it down even more between images and uh, bullet points to kind of point out the benefits, right? Premium leather, foldable hinges. So they could do maybe a little bit better here by giving like that this is a feature and they could give you the benefit. So like stainless steel components in all high strain areas. That's good, but you know, they could also add stainless steel components in all high strain areas. So you know that your you know that your headphones are never going to wear down over time. It's something like that. You know, making it a little bit more of a benefit-focused statement instead of a feature statement. High performance drivers. Well, what does that do? Custom high performance drivers. So you know you get you're able to store the maximum amount of like whatever right on your right on your uh, headphones. Like I don't even know what it does. So that's something that they should explain the benefit a little better. Um, Aluminum antenna, best in class signal range, so you can you can listen to your devices from up to a certain amount of feet. All right, you want to include benefits. Now again, I'm not saying that this isn't good because this is good. I just think they should have taken it a little bit step further uh, and really tried to put some benefits in there. Okay. And then that's all sales copy again, because down here they do technical specifications, which is good. So up here they should really be doing your benefits um, and showing you exactly. Because the difference is uh, a, a feature lets you know what it does. A benefit lets you know how it's better for you to have that feature. All right. 
And that's important to understand because uh, it's so it's so subconscious in marketing, but it's so important for higher conversion rates. All right. Now, again, if you're just selling a T-shirt, then your benefits can be a lot more loose on that end. All right. As as a matter of fact, we're going to I'm going to pull my site up, but I'm also going to pull up Sunfrog. So we can look at something that's just like. Uh, OK, so. First of all, huh, wonder if they're using custom parts. Um, anyway, so you can, that's cool, uh, featured artist. So anyway, the, oh, let's just find, we're just trying to get to a shirt here. All right, so you can see here, uh, their copy is simple. 100% satisfaction guaranteed, printed in the USA, design description, cats and dogs breaking up the alphabet. Like with a t-shirt, you, you can keep it uh, really pretty simple, all right? And, and this is a really good, um, you know, this is a really good this template to model what you do after. All right. So like for mine, for example, You know, again, uh, I like the way that they keep everything. That's all your theme, though. So depending on what theme you use, is going to make it a little bit more um, difficult. You know, for me, I think I just need to get my header smaller so I can get my call to action above the fold. But same type of thing here. It's very simple. They see that they can pick their style, or col style color, size. And then underneath here, you know, my benefits are really that it's not sold in stores, available in multiple sizes and colors. Select your favorite, then add to cart to check out. Shirts are made from 4.3 ounce natural ring spun cotton and all materials sourced here in USA, as well as printed. And then I, I we support your hustle. And then you, I have links if they want to see it in the other way, which I'll always do with like anything that is going to be the same design on different shirts and view size and chart. So I'm not gonna lie, I personally think that my description area is a lot better than what they're doing here at Sunfrog. But I do think that their their template here is really clean and really nice and you don't need a huge description. Uh, especially when you're selling something that you can eye up right away and tell if you like or not. All right, so those are two different ways to look at it when it comes to that. Um, but you do wanna consider your copy. And you do want to put some copy in there uh, when you're getting started I would go more on the route of this and making sure that you cover the benefits all right or at least tell them what it is this is the benefit design not sold in stores now I might be able to add something there and say so you know you're getting a unique one-of-a-kind item I give them instructions to let them know they have to choose their favorite size and color style um, and then tell them what it's made of tell them that it's sourced here in the USA and printed uh, and then secure checkout stamp here at the bottom. I didn't realize that my background color was different. I'm going to have to change that to white. But uh, so you, you get the idea there. OK. Moving into the next one, images. Images I've already talked about. But again, you want to use good, clean images. I think that this only applies to people that I've seen out there that try to put uh, you know, images that still have watermarks on them right from AliExpress or images that are a little too pixelated. Like, for example, when I was using that example with Customplex, all right, this image is a little blurry. So I'm going to use this design, but I'm going to put it on a different mock-up because it's good as a small image like that, but it's it's creating the image too large, and so it's a little bit pixelated. So this is a good example of an image that there's nothing wrong with it, but uh, it could be better because it could be more crystal clear like that is right there. So I'm just pointing, this store is not even really live yet. You know, that's why I'm using it as an example because I know there's still things I need to work on with this store. I just haven't had a chance to really get into it yet because I have so many things going on. Um, all right, so moving on the call to action must be clear, must stand out. If they're adding the cart, then use an add to cart. If they're buying now, then buy now. This is like, if you think of AliExpress, there's a buy now button 
and there's a proceed to checkout button, I think, or use other payment options button. The buy now button buys it automatically. If you click buy now on AliExpress, you don't have a chance to go to like a checkout page. It just buys it for you and takes you right to the end process. All right, so you just want to make sure. Um, add the cart. Something's going wrong with this page, so I definitely need to check that because that's not even live. Um, but basically, you can see mine says add the cart, and that's because if they click this button here, it's going to add it to their cart, and they still have to check out. All right, so when somebody clicks this, it adds it to the cart. And then the cart shows up and they have to go to checkout. All right. So you want to be clear about what you're doing. And this may seem like, um, you know, it may seem like, oh, well, that's a small thing. But in all reality, if your button says buy now here or buy this now or get this here, uh, then, you know, it, it could be confusing. All right. And don't try to get too cute with what you're putting in here either. I've some, seen some people say things like, you know just going over the top with their call to action and really we want people to believe we're a real store all right so let's look at some other call to actions theirs says add the cart theirs says add the cart theirs says add the bag theirs says oh that's sold out so it says notify me let's look at something else theirs says add the cart as well so you can see that that really makes sense because all of us are using Shopify themes. And if you're using a Shopify theme, when you click this, it's going to add it to the cart and you still have to go through the checkout. All right. So you're not buying now. And if you tell somebody buy now, again, it's just something that's a little bit confusing. And then they might get to the checkout process and, and abandon cart. All right. So something to consider with what you're using as your call to action. Be clear. Make it stand out. All right. You can see on every page the add the cart theirs is the only one i don't think theirs stands out i'm not sure why they have it gray i would change that color if i were them um theirs is something that stands out theirs is something that stands out theirs definitely stands out so theirs definitely stands out you want your you want your call to action button to stand out it's just one of those psychological things that's been proven time and time again that it matters all right so uh, make sure that you're using a color that stands out and fits your theme. I mean, don't use just a crazy color that doesn't fit your theme at all. But make sure it's definitely something like when you come here, that stands out. All right, even though it's not a blue or a green or these colors you hear people tell you you should use, all it needs to do is stand out to work because you want to draw their attention to the Add to Cart button. Okay? Price, bold and clear. Something else I believe should always be the case so pretty pretty clear uh it's not like a, a super big but you know you can see this as soon as you get on this page um with them the price isn't i mean it could be clearer i think with their price but i understand it's like that because it's it, they're basing it on the variation uh their price right there i would i would use a different color for the price if i were them but again you know this is this is really small this is kind of a subjective thing. Their price is nice and clear. But basically, you want to make sure people can see and tell what the price is. All right. So, again, with something like this, obviously, Sunfrog does very well. They're a million dollar company. So, clearly, the price works in different formats. But again, you know, mostly here, it should be above the fold. You guys are probably all doing this correctly because it's something that's really hard to mess up when you're using a Shopify template. But again, just make sure your price is clear, it's there, and customers know how much something costs as soon as they see the page. Reviews, of course, make it more likely to buy. I haven't really been too big a fan of reviews in the past because I've been using dropshipping sites. And when I'm dropshipping, I probably won't use reviews because you just, I mean, you don't need them to make sales. And I've proven that because I didn't use reviews at all really last year and I made a lot of money. Um, but they are something that will increase conversions. So if you do have a spot that you, you see, can see here, they include a spot to write a review. Um, I don't think they have any reviews on here. They have a page for reviews, though. So that's definitely cool. Um, you know, they have a page where they've been featured. This is a great page for them. All right. They have reviews right underneath the product which is good. You have a link right here to see the Facebook reviews. And they don't really have a review section, but they have a spot that they've been featured in. 
or do they have reviews? Event blog artist about no, so they just have that. All right. Um, if I had reviews, they would be down here. Sunfrog reviews. I know that they have a review section, I think, on a lot of their pages, but it probably depends on how popular the shirt is. You know, not every shirt's going to have a review. Um, but again, I'm just mentioning it because if you can get reviews, then it's something that can help. Uh, you know, and it's something that can really maybe push you to the next level with your conversions. Live chat. Also, something good to integrate if you can support it. You can integrate your page on Shopify now, right with Facebook Messenger. And th these are something that, all right, like I'm not saying that they you need to have them, but that they can help increase conversions. I plan on having a live chat function installed with here. I plan on having reviews installed with here. If you're trying to build a brand into the long term, then I would absolutely use them. And that's what I plan on doing here. So I do plan on having a spot for reviews. I plan on having a spot for a live chat function somewhere in here where people can either contact us or hit us up right away with live chat because I'm always on my phone. So if somebody hits me on a live chat, then I will be able to respond to that right away or have a VA who can respond to that right away in the future. All right. Variations. Explain your variations. I'm going to lump these two together, visual modifications or variations. This is more for people that have like the custom plex or if you have something like that app. Uh, not many people do, um, but we just did custom plex. So we're going to talk about it here briefly uh, because it is something that like, for example, where did we see? Oh, like for Sunfrog, for example. Oh, so theirs isn't really visual modification. They just made a shirt for every single type of person, which is insane. Something you can do when you have a huge team of people or when you just want to spend a lot of time. You could go look up, you know. So anyway, point is, if you have some type of customization, right, then you can do, you know, you want to include that. Um, so they know available multiple sizes colors select your favorite and then add a cart like I like to let them know and these are very clear Shopify does this for you in the theme in a lot of ways but it's still important to mention because this matters you want to explain your variations and your visual modifications so like if we come back to the the I hustle for T then you see custom text so down here now you can customize the shirt to say whatever you want. Just use the text box to update the editable text for this design and then click. Uh, I'm, then I should I should make that better, actually, and, and put this and say, and then click here to preview and put it in quotation marks so people know where to click and that they can see their visual modifications happen in real time. All right. Then uh, when you're happy with your design, select your size and paper color. Right, so that's that's exactly the type of idea you want to explain it so people know. All right, custom text so people know this is where they put the custom text, and then they click here to preview. Okay, so that's that's how that works. You just want to make sure that you explain it to people so they're not getting confused. All right, and then finally, you want your trust seals. I explain this in the videos, so this should be pretty obvious. Uh, you can see mine does say easy returns. I I didn't point that out earlier, but it does say money back guarantee and easy return satisfaction guarantee. So I do hit those points in my thing, even though you can't see returns, you know, like I hit those people know easy returns. Yes, I can return this. OK. Um, when you are on a page, you want to have some type of trust seal, right? They have one down here, 100 percent satisfaction guaranteed. They have theirs right here, guaranteed safe checkout. That's a popular Shopify one that's getting passed around. All right, they do not have, well, yeah, they don't have any trust seals, which is something I would say that they should get added. Now, again, this looks like a brand that's really going on the fact that they've been reviewed and they're probably very popular and well-known in the headphones world. All right, so maybe they don't feel like they need the trust badges, but I would still say if this were a story asking me for my opinion, I would put trust badges down here. 
Same thing with them. They don't do it. You know, some of these brands, I guess, just think that they're above and beyond that. But I would still put them because I think it helps. I think it could help their conversion rate. They may have a good conversion rate. That doesn't mean it can't be better. So I would have trust badges no matter what, like they do, like I do, um, like, you know, most, you know, like they do as well. All right. And then finally, things that can help but aren't necessary. All right. Videos. Video can absolutely help if you have the type of product that a video can work. Uh, like for me with the customization, I'm going to make a general customization video once I start adding more products and include it up here, kind of like they do here with their application video. Kind of like they do here with their explanation video. All right. Video is a great medium to add uh, or a great type of I guess whatever you want to call it to add to your store to be more involved with the customer all right if you're just doing a drop shipping store like this it's probably not necessary there's probably not too many ways you can use it for all products except to take your pictures and put them into a video format or if you brought if you buy all of your products ahead of time make a little video of you actually like you know an up close video of the 360 of the product kind of thing like you could do that but it's definitely a lot of work and if you're running a general store drop shipping lots of different products then it could become something that is a little bit much to try to create a video for every video uh, a video for every video a video for every product um, but if you have a brand that has something specific like being able to customize your items or uh, explaining the benefits of a certain type of item or explaining the application of a certain type of thing that you sell then a video is a great thing to incorporate somewhere in your site testimonials and pictures all right obviously if you can get testimonials if you can get pictures of people wearing your item then that is absolutely awesome if you have something where you use artists this is something cool to add as well uh, you know it's not going to apply to everything but being able to get that again like i hope to be able to have people send in pictures of wearing their hustle shirt right and building a hustle community with this and, and creating a page that's just all about people who send their I, pictures in of wearing their shirt on their grind whatever their hustle is like i have a really specific intention with the brand i'm building here so that's something that works for me sunfrog i'm sure if you were to go somewhere on here you'd be able to find you know people that are able to whatever um so this is, these are all good things for branding. That's why I say they aren't necessary. Uh, that's why I include live chat down here again. It's not necessary, but if you're building a brand and you're really focused on trying to take an idea and build a, a following around it, then these are the extra things that are really going to help you stand out and they're going to help your conversion rates go higher. All right. Last thing is the bundle, the upsell, the cross sell. I'm not going to go over this in this video in too much spe uh, specificity because we all know that it exists we all know amazon and, and how they do that kind of thing um you know more inspiration we see how they're doing the cross sell underneath their product amazon does the same type of thing i don't know if we add the cart if we get some type of yep recommended for you so they have an app they're using where uh they recommend the stand i knew that was going to be an upsell and that's a great idea honestly so you can see if somebody's spending five hundred and forty nine dollars on a set of headphones they might be likely to drop another 50 on a stand for where they can store these really nice headphones in in plain sight and look at how beautiful they are um so that's that's something great let's see if they have a cross sell oh you have to select the size They're running a PayPal ad, but no, they don't really have a, an upsell or a cross sell, which is fine because I don't, you know, necessarily have one either. Well, like I'll have a cross sell probably with these, or I'll work out some type of upsell. I got a lot of plans for this store. I just haven't had time to work on it. Um, and then let's see what they do if I add one. Right. Okay, they do have an upsell, confetti gift wrap type deal. Uh, so you can see there that people have these upsells, cross sells. There's lots of different apps that you can try to use to make that work for your store. I'm not really going to go into that on specifics in here um, because we talked about it in another video. 
So that's everything, guys. Uh, that's about an hour of content here, hopefully to help put some things in perspective for you about what types of areas and focuses and elements of your pages are going to help you increase your conversions and why some of you may not be getting the results that you want. Very rarely. All right, look. If you're if you're finding if you're finding products from Ali, AliExpress and you're looking for really popular products, all right. If you're not making any sales and you've been testing popular products on AliExpress and you've been doing the research the way I've shown you, then chances are there's something on your store that is hurting your conversions, okay? Because getting people to your store should not be all that difficult if you're if you're testing products that have a unique angle you're testing products that have a good price point and you're testing products that you know you have an audience for on facebook which are things that i covered in depth like in real depth product and niche research i have that video on youtube and it's already up to like 14,000 views and a lot of people saying it's one of the best videos that they've seen on product and niche research for e-commerce so i know that i went over that in enough clarity for anybody to be successful with it so if you're doing that exactly you need to look at two areas either your research on the front end is not in depth enough and you're not picking the right products and researching the right audiences or you are doing that and on the back end you're not setting up a store that is optimized for conversions and so really the research should be the easier part guys because I, I break it all down and I tell you that any niche can be profitable so you're looking at it and saying that, you know if you haven't had success you need to be saying well what is it am I not doing the niche and product research correctly or am I doing that correctly just like Nick showed and I'm just not putting enough time into my store and actually developing a checkout experience that people will want to go through and be trustworthy of. All right, so that's that's kind of what this was all about, looking at these examples. I'm going to put this in the in the in the files section so that you can have this document as a reference guide if you want to. And if you want to see where I pulled some of these stores from, all you need to do is go to uh, overlow backslash blog backslash Shopify stores or just go to Google and type in Shopify store examples. I mean, this is so simple. I saw someone post in the group the other day. They wanted some example stores like just go to Google and look for it. You get examples from Shopify here, two different sets of examples from Shopify, one from another one. Then there's overlow. Then there's this store we make websites and there's you know like there's so many examples here to come look at and see if you're doing it the right way and these are the points that you should be looking at when you're evaluating other stores and your store so hopefully that helps for you to be able to go back and look at your store and evaluate it based on these things are these things clear ask yourself in the question format do I know exactly what this product is? Do I know exactly how this product works? Do I know how large this product is? Like instantly, they, they, these all need to be things, you know, you should be hitting at least 80% of these things instantly. Instantly, as soon as somebody looks at your page. And ideally, you want to be hitting 100% of them on a subconscious level that people are trustworthy of your store and they want to buy. These are the elements that help you answer these questions all right, if you follow these elements, you're going to be answering these questions and you're going to have a subconscious checkout experience. It's going to make sense to your customer. And then it just becomes about finding the right products and creating ads that are simply a precursor to these types of questions. All right. So the ad just gets the original interest out there and then they click on the ad. They go to the page and they get every one of these questions answered and they go through the checkout process because they like it and they're interested and you've answered all their questions so they feel trustworthy about buying it. All right. And if they don't buy it right away, then you have your system set up on the back end to try to save that sale, like the retargeting, the abandoned cart protector uh, and different things that you can do to, to try to, to save that sale. OK, that's everything for this video. Guys, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them below. Please do not blow up my message box asking me to look at your store because I'm not going to because it's not fair 
to everybody else that's doing it on their own like I did it on my own and plus now that we have a group of people who have actually purchased a product that I've promoted within the group Customplex and I've said that one of the things I'm going to do is help those people I need to be fair and so those people that actually took the time to spend money and make a major investment in their store and I told them I would help them because of that investment I'm going to give them attention and I'm, I'm not going to give anybody else, you know, simple questions here and there like Nick, somebody needs to join the group or, you know, Nick, can you help me with this? And obviously some of you people that are in the group, I have a, more of a relationship with because we've talked and I like you and, you know, like that kind of thing. But, you know, if you're just hitting me up out of random and telling me to look at your store or uh, like asking for handouts, I'm not going to, it's not going to happen now, especially with this store. Just understand that for me to be fair, Especially as, you know, there will be things that I promote in the group from time to time that I know are valuable. Uh, and of course, because I'm an entrepreneur at the same time, and this is a business for me. So for those people that make investments with me and the things that I'm doing, those are the people that are going to get the personalized one on one attention when it comes to looking at their store. Everybody else, I'm going to make these group videos and this content. Listen, if you follow this, you're going to be successful. This is everything you need to know. But, you know, you can't hit me up in my message box and say, uh, you know, can you can you uh, go through my store and see if it answers the six questions you said? Because I'm not going to. All right. That that attention is going to be given to the people that have, uh, you know, invested in getting a higher level of coaching when it comes to that. So uh, that's everything for this video. And again, I know I've said that before, but that really is everything at this point with that last disclaimer I just put out there. So make sure that your store is on point. Make sure it's looking good. Make sure you're putting the time in to create a template and have that expected layout and hit on all of these bullet points for your products. And then, you know, just start selling because I guarantee if you're doing all of this stuff, then it's really just a matter of finding good products uh, and matching them up to the right audience. And we can make a lot of money this year, regardless of what niche you're in or what you're selling. So I look forward to seeing your success in the group. Until then, hustle hard. Remember, live free.